like so what did you bought it for and how much is it worth bought it for 3 4 crores it's probably 10x right boss paisa itna banao ki ginne ki zarurat nahi padega your stock options became 400x abhi sports gaadiyan chala rahe hain parties ho rahi hai traditional values of a relationship which our ancestors had is no longer the reality in at least the big cities so seeing that trend why didn't you start a dating app before the foreign companies launched in india wasn't that like a timing that you missed out on I think overall your portfolio got like 40% CAGR that's what i read 43% realized CAGR and unrealized is maybe 50% right so the biggest problem is financial literacy if you ask me no i don't fully agree with that view i think there is one hey guys welcome back to the 1% club show where we explore the financial and career journeys of the top 1% of this country. On today's episode, we have Mr. Anupam Mittal, who is of course a shark on Shark Tank, has invested in more than 300 plus startups. Anupam, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure man, Sharan, great to reconnect. Uh, everybody knows you as one of the coolest sharks on Shark Tank, but I want to know from you what does a day in your life look like? My three roles are running shadi.com people group. Yeah. Uh investing right outside of shark tank so i have a large portfolio i have many companies that have grown very large and that's considerable wealth for yeah. me right if you take all those companies together of course it's a big part of uh, of my wealth and then there is this show that's become 20% of my life because it doesn't stop it's not like hum teen mahine har weekend gaye shoot kar liya ho gaya ab ye samay aapke sath baitha hu so it continues before <clears throat> after so these three roles now and i've you know i'm a father now so uh, so 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 there's a lot right? so what time do you wake up i am up between 6 and 6:30 okay and uh, i'm off to bed between 10:30 and 11 usually now let's go a uh, little bit back <laughs> yeah. um i read somewhere that um you started off living in a 1000 square feet house with 20 people that's how your childhood was and fast forward to in your early 20s you became a multi millionaire yeah. right now that's a dream come true for most indian uh, kids out there like how does somebody become a multi millionaire by the time they are in early 20s when my grandfather expired my dad was 15 or 16 Okay. And he had three brothers and four sisters, and he was the eldest in the family. So he went to Calcutta and he got a job making hundred rupees a month. From there, <coughs> he used to send money back home, and you know he slowly built up because of his honesty and integrity. That company made him a partner. So then he moved to Bombay. He started his own factories. He eventually left that company and he became a. uh businessman of repute in the textile industry there was nobody who didn't know gopal mittal so when i was born we was i was born in very humble means in a very small house in malad hmm. and it was a joint family with chacha chachis kids bees log ek ghar mein reh rahe hain but as i grew up you now dad started doing really well as i said he became very successful yeah so by the time i was you know maybe pre teen uh you know we were fairly well to do and like you you were saying i was very influenced by boss america mein ha matlab jadoo hai yaar matlab hum pichhre dekhte the hollywood ki music sunte the english music and you was jaying and dad was doing very well by then so he was going to finance my education there fortunately i got a fully paid scholarship so once i finished though i it took me a long time to find a job kyunki recession mein chali gayi thi economy but i didn't I, i i didn't give up ha huh? late 90s I, right yeah i didn't give up mai laga raha uh, i ended up in a company called micro strategy and this is you were asking me luck yeah or decisions or everybody in those roles were getting paid some 80000 dollars they offered me some 55000 dollars to start hmm uh maine le liya but within one year of taking that job i moved to the headquarters of that company became a very important piece within a startup within that company within one more year i became director of strategic partnerships my comp had gone up to 100k i had a lot of stock options our company valuation went from 100 million to 40 billion dollars so i was a multi millionaire so 400x basically yeah 
your stock options became 400x abhi sports gaadiyan chala rahe hain parties ho rahi hai early 20s But, never that, seen so can see, you tell me why, uh, how you were promoted so fast because be, that is not luck that is that, something of your doing that is two things one is working hard what is working hard working hard matlab everything is your worry not ki this is my job boss main wo nahi karunga main wo nahi karunga yeah. main wahan bhi bathroom jata tha na if there was litter main utha ke can mein dal deta tha so you treated right. the company like your own absolutely right i leave things better than you found them hmm. even if something was not in my department or somebody some other role i would question everything hmm. right so people pick up on that ki boss this guy demonstrates yeah. a lot of ownership Yeah, that was one part. The second part was positioning myself. So you acted like a one percent employee, right? If you want to call yeah. it that, nice plug, one <laughs> percent. I acted like a one percent employee. Yeah, no, I I think I can also draw parallels in my company also. Some few employees will go that extra mile where they want to show that this is my company as well. I'm going to stay, yeah. you know, working long hours. I'm going to be there whenever the boss calls me. I'm going to work on Saturdays, Sundays without any complaining. And then that happens. I also feel like, yeah, these guys are not just employees. These are like real players. Bilkul. They valued as much as me. They believe in the mission as much as me, right? So then I have no option but to give them whatever they ask for. Yeah, exactly. Make yourself indispensable, right? So one time I was in position, I reached that position. <clears throat> then i could ask for whatever compensation i want hmm. what did you ask for that so my point is this right i didn't need to i would say mera jab review aaya i said boss i joined at you know almost half of what you usually pay huh. i never asked for a renegotiation today it's my review i have done xyz you already know i don't even need to speak about that that's why i'm sitting with you i will leave it to you आप डिसाइड करो नो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट माई वर्थ वॉट इट देव दे आई स्टार्ट गेटिंग पेड अबाउट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डॉलर इज अ लॉट ऑफ मनी एट दैट टाइम एंड आई लॉट ऑफ स्टॉक ऑप्शन सो यू नो आई वॉज वॉकिंग तो वो अमेरिकन ड्रीम जो मैंने सोचा था ना वो हो गया वो हो गया यार एंड आई आई वॉज लाइक डू दिस इज क्रेजी आई कुंट हैव इमेजिन इट राइट आई वॉज टॉक टू माई डैड एंड आई टू ग्लोट ऑन द फोन डैड आपको मतलब देखो मैंने इतने साल में कर दिया बहुत अच्छी बात है अब चलो पैसे बना लिए अभी शादी कर लेकिन तो जो आदमी सोलह सत्रह घंटे काम कर रहा है वो क्या मतलब ठीक है ओकेजनली वी टू गो फॉर क्रेजी वेकेशंस एंड हायर क्रूज शिप्स एंड स्टेड वट एवर राइट वो दैट वाज वेरी लाइक दैट ऑफ वॉल स्ट्रीट लाइफ आई वुड से दैट बिकॉज दैट लाइफस्टाइल वाज लाइक एवरी डे हमारा कभी यू नो दो तीन महीने में एक बार बिकॉज वी डेंट हैट काइंड ऑफ टाइम राइट बट एट दैट पॉइंट डॉट कॉम बूम वॉज है had made money so i went all in bought all these stocks that were going crazy just like the crypto craze happened hmm. or dot com craze chal raha tha and then in 2001 it all crashed hmm. by 2000 actually march 2000 and our stock fell by 90% right over the next few months we were 666 dollars of share price at the highest point we had become a 3 dollar share Uh, after the stock nasdaq crashed on march in march 2000 it, by about november december we had become a 3 dollar stock so 99.5% crash yeah, mostly gone, gone. and then you never cashed out so what i had cashed out you bought cars no 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 i i was buying other dot com stocks which also crashed which everything got wiped out by 1995% so not only was i buying with the money that i had I had leverage on that stock. You put five million dollars of equity on that. You took another three million dollars of leverage, mm. and you bought more equity. So that's eight million dollars of equity on paper. But when it gets wiped out, that's now worth four hundred k. But you still owe three million, right? That's what happened to you. That's what happened to me. How old were you? Right. I was maybe twenty four, twenty five. 
I can't imagine what you must be going through at that point of time. What did you do? You know, it's interesting. You would think I'd be devastated, right? Yeah. I wasn't. How now? Why not? <laughs> it's, well, I was hurt. I it's was like you were in a high and then you came down. I mean, it's... I was upset. I was disappointed with myself. I kicked myself for a few days. But everybody around me was going through the same thing. That okay. was one. Ah, that's, that's Chalo, sabki fadi hui hai. Matlab, ah, that ah, helps a little bit. Ah, of course. Eh, mil ke rote hai. Ah. Kya ho gaya? My roommate was also crying. So, sabki aalat kharaab thi. Not everybody was leveraged. One. Two, I was very young. So, itni samaj nahi thi what this meant, right? Today, I mean, you're young, but you're smart. I was not young and smart. I was young and foolish. You know, agar samaj mein aata ki that much money at that point, allocated correctly and compounded over the next 20 years, you could be a billionaire, right? If yeah. you made the right... It didn't make any sense. But it's okay, it's done, we'll make it again. And then how did you pay back that debt? So, so anyway, wo, wo fir, it took some time, but, but we paid it. I sold out my, some of the assets that I had. And by then, fortunately, I had started a company in India and I was moonlighting. So, we started a company here. So, we were getting a little bit of money from there. So, that was what I used. Because we had a company called Satyanet Solutions, where we were doing IT services karte the for other companies in the West. Right? That was your company only? That was me and my cousins. Right? Okay. So, we started this on Sagai.com. What dot, Sagai.com? Uh, which was a precursor to Shadi.com. But, you know, we had saved about $30,000 in our company. And then Shadi domain was getting the For $30,000, we were getting the Shadi domain? For about twenty five, some something. It 30, was so expensive. Twenty-five thousand or thirty thousand seemed exorbitant. Koi nahi deta tha wo time pe, right? But I believed that boss without a domain that can become ubiquitous, that can become known for the category, uh, it'll be tough. Yeah. And this will make our job that much easier. So we have saare paise dal diye domain kare. Okay. Bank me kuch nahi bacha uske. Huh. I mean, two four thousand dollars only. Uh, and things change, changed our fortunes. Today, I have to spend half of what my competitors have to, just because the domain, domain is, is strong. The brand is so strong. Hai. You know, I almost right. made the mistake of uh, not getting finance with Sharon uh. because I didn't really think I'll be getting into business and all of that. I uh. always looked at myself uh. as a content creator back then. Right. You know, I'll make some videos and I'll get some brand deals. Right. Didn't really think I'll need a website and then launch a business out of it. Because at that point of time, it was 80,000 rupees, financewithsharon.com. Okay. Right? I thought, okay, I don't want to spend 80,000 rupees. Uh. And then because of that mistake, I eventually purchased it like six months later. And I finally got it for three lakhs. And then I bought it. But you it. paid the three. I, I bought, the, bought it for three lakhs. Good, Thank good God call. I got good it now. Call. <laughs> good call. Yeah, good call. And then we started to build. We built Interactive Avenues. I became the biggest shareholder. That was hmm. my first angel investment. Yeah. Again, there I had only a couple of crores and I gave them all the money. Hmm. That was another example of going all in. It turned out very well. It became hmm. India's largest digital ad agency. Hmm. Then I invested in Ola. Then over time, we just kept investing. Makan.com ko sell kiya. Hmm. Uh, you know, built India's first mobile gaming company. Way ahead of Moj, its time. Right? Moj Mobile, right? So, you know, uh, and then 2008, 2009 happened. Le Lehman Brothers. Hmm. This is a very interesting story. Nobody knows. Hmm. Tell me. We had built, we had raised capital in 2006. And in 2008, just before Lehman Brothers happened, we had signed documentation to raise what was about a $25 million round. Approximately that had a hundred and twenty million dollar valuation for 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 what for for people interact okay for now it doesn't sound too much but that is equivalent to raising hundred and fifty million dollars at a billion dollar valuation today okay right? I'm talking two thousand eight hmm. so all our expansion plan were according to that hmm. they, because negotiations were going on for six months Sara paper ho gaya. So we had hiring. Kar li thi. The idea was expand Shadi, expand Makan, expand the one or two other businesses we had. So all these companies are under one parent? They were. They were at that point. Under People Interactive. That's where we had raised and Moj Mobile. Hmm. And the whole idea was to blow up these companies. By raising money for the parent? By raising money at the parent level, right. And uh, 
लीवन ब्रदर्स एंड यू नो एंड वी कैप्ट चेसिंग लास्ट फ्यू डेज की बॉस पैसा नहीं मतलब मनी से वो सुध बैंक क्या हो रहा है क्या हो रहा है बट दैट मनी नेवर केम बट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वी हैड टू लेट पीपल गो एंड वी हैड टू वाइंड डाउन बिजनेस एंड वी हैड टू यू नो सेपरेट आउट मॉज मोबाइल एंड सेपरेट आउट मकान डॉट कॉम विच आई टू पर्सनली फाइनेंस बिकॉज इन्वेस्टर्स वॉन्टेड नथिंग टू डू दैट सो इट वॉज लाइक एन ओपन हार्ट सर्जरी वंस अगेन वी वेंट फ्रॉम हैविंग अ लॉट टू हैविंग नथिंग Right. So, like this, how many cycles have we gone through? Making money, debt. Making money, zero. Making Two, money, zero. Three. And it gets easier. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> Suffering, you know, builds resilience, hmm. right? And uh, resilience builds character, hmm. right? So I don't know if it gets easier, but it gives you more character. Yeah, this is what uh, <laughs> this is what I don't know uh, if it's worth anything. No, this is what but, me and my co-founder also talks about. Yeah, that the more stress you are able to deal with, yeah, the 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 more you are evolving. Yeah, and something that used to bother you last year, yeah. it won't bother you this year because you built that resilience, and yeah. that's how you grow as a person. Ah, uh, nay, ha, bilkul. I mean, you know, uh, so you know, is that good from a typical finance lens no because you're not compounding yeah when you come close to extinction yeah then you you know pay a big price for that mm. right from an roi standpoint yeah uh, but, but if you talk about compounding of learning yeah. and compounding of character for whatever it's worth huh. then it's amazing right yeah. <laughs> uh lekin you know if i look back at had i not made that foolish decision when my dot com days during the dot com bust days I would have been a billionaire today, hmm. right? By just compounding that. Yeah. So now maybe I'll still be one by leveraging all my wisdom and character over the next couple of years. Who knows? Four times is the charm. I think. Who, who knows? Right? Huh. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm very bad at financial management. To hmm. be honest with you, that's hmm. why I say that. So that was going to be my next no, question. No, I'm, I'm very bad. I have asset allocation. Yes, I'm very well. Some of money, other, and to have budgets and all, I think it just makes my gives me goosebumps. So I had this thought before. Boss, money is so much that you don't need to count it. Right? And when you don't have to count, then you don't have to do all this budgeting and asset allocation. Whatever you want, buy it. 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 So that's so that's why maybe I walk on the edge. That's why I go all in, because I believe, and this is controversial, but I believe wealth creation, real wealth creation, can only happen with very concentrated bets, and by going all in. Wealth preservation, right? There you can use your. asset allocation models and things like that and spread your money and so on but you can't create wealth by doing of course it, right uh, maybe it's just a way for me to justify my stupid mistakes but hmm. that's what i still so believe so currently now fast forward to today yeah how do you manage your money how do you invest do you have financial advisors like how does your asset allocation look like so one is i'm not invested at all in the public markets Okay. Basically, you've not invested in stocks, mutual funds, zero. I just started uh, after my daughter was born for her. So I do an SIP on her name, huh. but nothing on my name. Forty percent on uh, where I what I run. Thirty forty percent in all the startups. Which is about three hundred startups. Yeah, and. Uh, Fifteen twenty percent real estate and other stuff. When you mean real estate, do you include your primary residence yeah, or some include, other property? Yeah, primary residence and other properties that I own. Got it. And like, how do you look at real estate as an investing uh, vehicle? Like, how many pieces of properties do you own, and how do you evaluate? I just own it because of family real estate that's come to me. Okay. And so it's like inheritance. Estate, yeah, and real estate that I purchased for my office and residences a couple of residences that i purchased hmm. but honestly our real estate is a bit of a fool's investment right can you explain bas india mein kya hai na your rental yield is 2 3% correct right uh commercial is a little more maybe but it has to be managed actively commercial is difficult hmm. unless you're doing it professionally in my view and residential mein 2 3% ka yield hai hmm 
So essentially the reason you are investing in real estate is you are expecting capital appreciation. Yeah. Only then it will make sense, right? So you bought your primary home which I believe is a 6 BHK house in South Bombay. Uh, the cuff parade area but How i bought that, these very cheap like that that's what i'm sure the you bought it a very long time back and it would have really compounded when i well. came back from the us like right. so what did you bought it for and how much is it i mean i we so i bought it for 3 4 crores it's probably 10x right in how uh, many period how many years uh 13 14 years it's 10x in 13 uh, 14 years. that's a fantastic same investment. thing with my office properties as well but look that's not that's luck yeah man it I you have, seem to be very lucky no that was just <laughs> i mean real estate cycles uh, you know they come and go yeah but i think investing is a very personal thing correct while you want to maximize your return you also want to maximize your peace of mind of course different people get different things give them peace of mind but so for example you're talking about owning a house yeah a lot of people derive a lot of peace of mind from that yeah so if that's you then by all means you buy a house yeah right because that's equally important than maximizing your return on investment a lot of people will say you don't be stupid don't be foolish why should you buy a house if i ask most people what would you prefer 2 crore in a house that you're living in or 2 crores invested in the market now logically and mathematically 2 crores in the market should give you more peace of mind because that is giving you you know compounding, compounding yeah. returns it's growing faster and it's also giving you that interest income which can pay for your living expenses so the biggest problem is financial literacy if you ask me yes and no i don't fully agree with that view i think there is one aspect is that hmm. financial illiteracy and if you're doing it just because of that then you know then that's not the right thing because you should be these should be informed decisions correct right i think emotional decisions are fine but you should know it's an emotional decision and you should own up to that decision there's nothing wrong with an egoistical emotional conditional or intellectual decision they're all decisions in their own right but do you know don't confuse it don't make an emotional decision thinking it's an intellectual decision yeah. because it's not but Dekhi, most people don't know that it's a that's the key you not should, an emotional decision you should decision. know that hamare buzurg kehte hain ki apna ghar kharido apni office kharido jewelry lo Hmm. and you know today's uh, kids and our generation and your generation say no intellectually aap dekho it makes no sense right yeah yes but if you look at anecdotes a lot of households who've gone completely to ruin are only safe today they have a roof over their heads because their ancestors insisted Border. on buying the primary house i'll tell you what happens when you invest in the markets Mm. If you have the discipline to stay invested and compound yeah. that's great yeah. but most people are driven by fear and greed yeah you know the stats so that they will take that liquid money and they will double down on something stupid correct or they will remove the money when they shouldn't yeah and they will drive themselves to ruin and at that point uh, your returns yeah i'll share an inter- interesting yeah. stat with you for people who are doing these sips in mutual funds less than 2% of the people are able to hold the money for 20 year period there you go and that's how you make money yeah that's how you make yeah, money so right. because of that freedom and the flexibility that investing in mutual funds and sips offers you the biggest challenge is not whether you are picking the right mutual funds or picking the right investment options the biggest selling is that investor psychology right that investor mindset yeah because of which you are making these rash decisions absolutely you hear this news that okay recession is coming i'll yeah. pull out all the money yeah. my friend is saying buy these stocks these are good i yeah. heard some tip from someone i will go all in into that stock that's right. so th- these are the reasons why people that's end up right. losing money in the stock that's market. right and that's why i think this peace of mind thing this emotional decision of real yeah. estate or jewelry or gold is important hmm. right uh for most people yeah. because they're driven by fear and greed right? yeah if you're not in that bracket sure don't you know live in a rented place yeah. don't buy jewelry do you know invest all your money in the market if you can stay disciplined yeah but for the average person i would say that may not be the best way uh to secure your future should a crisis hit hmm. right and so i think it comes per investing comes down to each personal dekhi mere liye kya hai na i tried public investing for some time i have i have ocd yaar wo 
पब्लिक रहता है ना प्राइस शेयर का तो मैं देखता रहता हूँ राइट प्राइवेट मार्केट्स में क्या है ना पता ही नहीं है यार क्या होने वाला है वॉट आई फिगर्ड आउट इज एज अर्ली स्टेज इन्वेस्ट आई हैव टू इन्वेस्ट इन लॉर्ड ऑफ कंपनीज आई हैव टू स्टे इन्वेस्टेड फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम और पैसे बनेंगे और मेरा सिचुएशन अब ऐसे है ना बिकॉज आई इन्वेस्ट इन सो मेनी कंपनीज ओवर सो लॉन्ग दैट एवरी फ्यू मंथ्स लिक्विडिटी इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड बिकॉज समथिंग इज बीइंग सोल्ड समथिंग इज हैपनिंग यस हाफ ऑफ दोज कंपनीज हैव फेल्ड मेनी मोर विल फेल बट इट डजेंट मैटर इट डजेंट वरी मी डजेंट बॉदर मी बिकॉज इट्स अ पोर्टफोलियो अप्रोच आई थिंक ओवरऑल योर पोर्टफोलियो गॉड लाइक फोर्टी परसेंट सी एच आर दैट्स वॉट आई रेड Forty three percent realized CHR. Realized CHR. I mean that is yeah. no public market. Unrealized is maybe fifty percent, right? Right. But that's because again, you know, I you you said it, not me. Uh, you know how much effort was luck. A lot of it was luck. Timing. Look, the most important thing in life is timing. Mm. Keep saying that a lot. Yeah. Timing. Timing is so critical, you right? know. Yeah. And so, uh, I think I was at the right place at the right time, and so I set that ball in motion that the. portfolio is now large enough that there's always exits going on hmm. so liquidity is becoming lesser of a problem now hmm. otherwise in private investments it's a liquid yeah right? so because you mentioned timing i had one question for you yeah. uh see so you were one of the person like one of the first people or the first person in the country to look at marriages from a digital lens that yeah. one day marriages should happen on the internet yeah but fast forward to today or let's say even a decade back once the millennials and the gen zs crossed you know 18 years old they sort of uh, have a very different mindset on a relationship yeah. right hook up culture has increased the traditional values of a relationship which our ancestors have is no longer the reality in at least the big cities so seeing that trend why didn't you start a dating app before the foreign companies launched in india wasn't that like a timing that you missed out on no finance with dating <laughs> there's no money to be made bro no money I mean, to be made in dating apps if you look at the dating industry in india premium subscription so dekho yaar tinder bumble all these hookup sites uh you know there are a bunch of them they are stagnant their revenues are not that big hmm and the problem is yaar india mein equations it's very lopsided right men uh women always have too much to choose from then so so therefore you'll see very few guys uh get all the demand right yeah and all the other guys who come on these sites they don't know what to say this they say the most obnoxious things and the women run away yeah right and so i think there's no there's not real money to be made also this whole thing about millennials and Gen Zs, Gen Z तो चलो अभी छोड़ देते हैं एक बार. But millennials not using matchmaking sites is not quite correct. Most of no. our audience is millennials. Okay. Let me ask you a philosophical question. Why is it important to get married? Marriage is important because it will make you reach within depths that you did not know existed. Right. It will make you uncomfortable sharing your space with somebody, sharing your life with somebody. Uh, it will challenge you. It will expose sides of you that you didn't know existed. And these are very steep learning curves as a human being. There are certain things. हाँ गर्लफ्रेंड ठीक है आप बोलते हो तो गर्लफ्रेंड से नहीं होता है विदाउट लिविंग विद समबडी डे इन डे आउट सींग एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दैट पर्सन यू नो नहीं तो बाहर से सब अच्छा लगता है राइट इज अ वेरी डिफरेंट एवोल्यूशनरी कर्व एज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग राइट द सेकंड पार्ट हैविंग अ चाइल्ड एंड अ फैमिली इफ यू चूज टू इज ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव एज अ ह्यूमन बींग Yeah, so you mentioned Shark Tank is opening applications mm-hmm. again in June, July. Yeah. So I'll tell you about what we have done so far at the One Person Club. Yeah, yeah. वही मैं मैं देख रहा हूँ यार कब से and uh, pardon me, but you know I thought One Person Club is like a podcast only, but I'm realizing mm. through your merch and everything mm. that there is more to the story. Yeah. And I quickly looked at your website, and there's some club that you can join. That's stuff, right. right. That's right. So, what, boy? What? 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 What
how to be financially free. So that's our goal. So we do it through multiple ways. First, we have launched our edtech platform. We teach personal finance, stock market investing, how to manage your credit cards, wow. how to do tax planning, insurance planning, like all these things which have not been taught to us in schools and which everybody needs, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, CA, I love it. Actor. How big is your company? So right now we have 80 people and uh, the membership is almost 45,000 people. How much money have you raised? We have raised 10 crores from Nikhil Kamath uh, okay. at a 100 CR valuation. Okay. So that was about uh, six months back. And ever since then, the company has 3x the revenues. Wonderful. So yeah, so I was wondering, do you think this is like a good company to come on Shark Tank and pitch to you guys? You are on Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> so The Shark Tank okay. matters is sitting right here. So would you invest? Of course I would. You had to start today. Yeah. Um, let's say you're 22 single wow five lakhs in your bank account yeah how would you chart out the next five years for anybody building today i would first of all forget about that five lakhs i would probably put it in a sip or i'd put it in the stock market and forget about it and more important than that i would spend my next few years the next five months of my life immersing myself in AI in every possible way that I can. I would learn the brass tacks, bottom up. I would build applications with my own hand. Then I would work in some of the top AI companies in the world if I could, hmm. at least for a couple of years, right? And uh, build the capabilities to become dangerous and dominant over the next 20 years, right? And if I build those capabilities, the wealth, the fame, and the impact will follow. Right. But that's where I would focus all my energy on. Uh, because look, uh, there are some things that are as clear as day, and this is one of them. Uh, there's no denying it. Guys, if you stay till the end, thank you so much for sticking till the end. And I'll see you in the next one. Look forward to your wedding invitation. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>